Good morning. You're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's Monday, the 22nd of July, 2024. How are you doing? How was your weekend? I hope that you're looking forward to a very productive week. Anyways, on today's breakfast show, we'll be looking at reps threatening to compel erring CEOs of oil firms and MDAs to appear. Another topic we'll be discussing much later is challenges facing public varsity students in Nigeria. My name is Rome Paulson. Welcome to The Breakfast Show. We'll also be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. Hold on to your dreams of a better life and stay committed to striving to realize it. And that is by Earl G. Graves Sr. He was an American publisher and a writer. And he says this morning, hold on to your dreams of a better life and stay committed to striving for, well, to striving to realize it. So to striving for that better life that you want hold on to your dreams now it is important that you are a dreamer and not just a dreamer you're an achiever and i think that is what sums up this quote you should be able to have those big dreams those lofty ideas those goals and hold on to them sometimes people might tell you oh you know what your dreams are too big but it's okay and I just want you to know that you can achieve them if you keep striving to realize it. So being a dreamer is beautiful. It's fantastic. Your mind can go to places that no one can ever go to. And then looking for how to achieve those dreams, looking for how to realize them is just another thing. And I think that's what talks about execution. So most times we, you know, have those dreams. Well, having to execute it is the problem. Having to put those actions in place to say, how do I realize this dream of mine? So it is still as important as even making those dreams in the first place or, or thinking of those amazing ideas, having to do the work to put yourself under, to sacrifice certain things determines how successful you're going, your life is going to be. And so if you want those dreams to be achievable, if you want to realize them, then you have to do the work really because there is no rocket science to it. It is not a microwave whereby you just put it and before you know it, in a minute you get it out. No, you have to work for it. So hold on, hold on to those dreams this morning. Any dream, any idea that you have, you can achieve it, you can do it. And that's what our quote is saying this morning is Monday morning. So it is important that, you know, we just channel your mind into the right direction. And so this morning we're telling you that you should hold on to your dreams, keep fighting, keep doing the work, having to realize that dream, striving to realize it. And before you know it, it will happen. And you know what time does? Time shows the workings that you've done over the years. You can start now and say, I want to go back to school if you haven't. Maybe if you don't have a degree or something. And before you know it, in two, three, four years, you already have that degree. And you're like, you know what? I set this goal about a few years ago, but look at me now. I've been there, done that, and I'm even striving for it even much bigger goals. So hold on to your dreams this morning. Keep striving to realize it and you can do it. All right, moving over to our top trending stories. This first one says, federal government working against local refineries operators cry out. Local refinery operators are concerned that the federal government's decision to continue importing fuel undermines their efforts. As the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority NMDPRA described locally produced diesel as inferior to imports. The Crude Oil Refiners Association of Nigeria believes the government is favoring foreign fuel over domestic production, despite local refineries like Dangote's facing challenges and accusations of producing substandard products. NMDPRA's chief executive, Hamed Farouk, stated that relying solely on the Dangote refinery could lead to a monopoly and energy insecurity. 
while local refineries, um, refiners argue, argue that they are being unfairly criticized and not supported adequately with crude supplies. The Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, IPMAN, and former NMPC group managing directors have voiced concerns about the challenges facing indigenous refineries, including insufficient crude oil supply and the need for better regulatory support. Well, I think I can, ag I can agree with the better regulatory support because with the local refineries, you want to be sure of what they're doing and be sure that it is up to standard because we do not want to be selling substandard products. Now, with Dangote refineries, um, Refinery, who is being accused of um, having substandard products, well, that is where regulatory comes in. But I think it's super important that we're also giving the opportunity to the local refineries. Why do we have to import everything? And if you think about having to import, of course, there's a cost implication to that. So it is even more expensive because when you think of the import duties, first, we even have to export out and then import back in. For a country who is blessed with this product, why are we not looking at all options, trying to exhaust all the options when it comes to refine, refining our own products? Why do we always have to export it to refine it and import it back? There's, there's so much involved. If we have an option to do it well here, we should be able to. Even if you're saying, okay, it could be substandard um, products that comes out in the end, then why are you not finding a way to ensure that it is of better quality? The regulatory bodies that you're going to you know, put in place should ensure that whatever is coming out is okay enough to, and it can even match up with the foreign ones that are being imported. So if we have an opportunity like that, guess what? Even those foreign um, imports that are coming in, right, they started from somewhere. I'm sure they started refining like the local refineries, but over time they start to develop the refineries and have better products. So if we're always going to push our own aside, then how do we even get better? And, you know, even let me, let me just segue into other aspects as well. It's just how you always feel that Nigerian products are always inferior to the foreign ones. Not necessarily. It's just an idea that we have in our heads whereby we think that everything Nigerian is inferior, is substandard. Meanwhile, we might even have better products and all we just need is an opportunity to develop it and be better. For someone who walks into a supermarket, guess what? They would always want to choose an imported product before a Nigerian product because they just have that feeling that with the imported product, it's better. And I think this is where SON comes in, because if we're having better, better quality of products, I'm sure people would be confident enough to be able to choose Nigerian products. But if SON, if NAFDAQ, if all of these um, agencies are not doing their jobs properly, that's the reason why people would say, you know what, if it's made in the UK, if it's made in the USA, if it's made in China, if it's made in Korea or wherever it is, I'm sure that they have standard procedures that have been done there, whereby I can confidently say that this product is of good use to me but we need to get to a point where we can confidently say Nigerian products are of good use and we can even ex export our own products as well and so it is important that we know that all Nigerian products are not inferior and even if they are we can start to develop it today for instance China had to close their borders for a while to ensure that they could develop their own products and look at them they're the leading exporters they're the leading manufacturing country in the world they manufacture almost everything and so why can't we say we want to develop our own manufacturing industry in nigeria and bringing it back to crude that is the same thing that happens there so if there are local refineries why don't we even invest in them why don't we try to develop them and have better quality that we can start to export ourselves instead of having to put that cost implication every single time i think it's high time the federal government and its local refineries start to work together to ensure that we have better products and to ensure that this could just even be an amazing source of revenue for the country as well so hopefully something is being done about that and the regulatory bodies do their jobs all right another top trending story says LP, that is the Labour Party, denies involvement in protests as presidency fingers OB alleges treason. The Labour Party has firmly denied the accusations made by the presidency that its presidential candidate Peter Obi and his supporters are behind the planned anti-government protests scheduled for August 1. 
The presidency had described the calls for nationwide protests under hashtags such as Tinubu must go and hashtag revolution 2024 as treasonable, suggesting that there are attempts to undermine the current government. In a lengthy tweet, Bayo Onanuga, the special advisor to the president on information and strategy, accused Obi and his supporters of spreading these hashtags. He alleged that their actions are not democratic, but anarchists aiming to destabilize the government and incite a coup d'etat, thereby challenging the legitimacy of the current administration. Onanuga's accusation extended to linking the protest organizers to the violent hashtag NSERS protests of 2020, suggesting that the same individuals are now seeking to exploit economic hardships to incite further unrest. He argued that calling for the end of an elected government is high, well, is high treason and equated the planned protests with a civilian coup attempt. Onanuga asserted that these actions demonstrate impatience with the democratic process origin of those dissatisfied to wait for the next election in 2027 rather than attempting to destabilize the country. He also highlighted specific individuals he claims are behind the mobilization efforts calling for their arrest and legal actions against them. In response to the planned protests, Onanuga proposed a Save Nigeria rally from August 1 to 15 as a countermeasure to the anti-government demonstrations. He insisted the protest organizers aim to disrupt national stability and challenge the authority of President Bola Tinubu. Onanuga urged Nigerians to consider the government's efforts to address the economic challenges before participating in any protests highlighting initiatives such as increased minimum wage, student loans, and agricultural investments. He emphasized that the Tinubu administration is working towards elevating the economic difficulties faced by Nigerians and that the planned protests are unjustified and detrimental to national unity and progress. The Labour Party and OB's campaign team responded by reiterating their commitment to peaceful activism and criticizing the government's attempt to scapegoat opposition figures for the country's problems. The National Publicity Secretary of the Labour Party, Obiora Ifo, issued a statement refuting the claims and emphasizing that the party is known for its peaceful conduct. Obi's campaign spokesman, Yunusa Tanko, argued that it is preposterous to blame Obi for the economic hardships experienced by Nigerians. They emphasize that the protests are a legitimate way for citizens to express their dissatisfaction and called on the government to address the underlying issues causing public discontent instead of targeting opposition leaders. The Labour Party and its supporters urged the government to focus on implementing effective policies to improve the living conditions of Nigerians rather than stifling dissent and peaceful protests. First, I would like to say that I think it's a fundamental human right for anyone to voice out their displeasure. And so peaceful protest definitely is a fundamental human right, especially if you are dissatisfied with whatever is happening in a country. And so I can understand where the Labour Party is coming from, saying it is a peaceful protest and if they are known for um, peaceful activism, then I think that should be okay. But I don't like the fact that when certain people try to voice out their dissatisfaction, the government comes out and say, oh, yes, you are anti-government, or it's opposition just trying to um, rear their ugly head, calling us names and saying we're not doing our best, meanwhile we are. Or then they start to do the blame game of blaming past administrations for where we are today. I think it's important that, you know, sometimes it's okay to just chew whatever is going on, admit where you are, and then look for ways to make it better. If we keep doing the blame game, then we're not heading anywhere. If we keep blaming past administrations or blaming people now saying that they are the cause of the economic hardships, then how do we even move forward? Because all you're causing is rancor. Now, no one is against the federal government. And, you know, them saying, in fact, by Onanuga coming out to say you have to wait till 2027. Of course, that is how it should be. That is the legal way it should be because this is a democracy. And with a democracy, that leader was being voted in. It was just the majority that counted, right? So, or whoever put him in, they decided that he should be the leader. And so you have to wait for him to be done. 
And then in the next election cycle, you go to the polling units again and say well, who you want and vote that person in. So that is the legal way to go. But it is still OK for us to voice out our displeasure. And all you have to do is to listen to us and make it better, because that's what democracy is all about. It is for the people and by the people. You're not there to rule yourself. You're there to rule a nation. And a nation comprises of several citizens, different people, and you have to make sure that everyone is okay. So you're listening to A, you're listening to Mr. B, you're listening to Mr. Z. You have to listen to everybody and make sure that the decisions you are making cuts across what everybody wants. So if we are having some economic challenges, it's as simple as coming to address us and say, okay, these are the plans that we have. These are things that we're going to roll out in the next six months. These are things we're going to roll out in the next one year. These are things that we're going to see in the next two to three years if you're not giving us those plans then how can we trust where you're taking us to it's just like a driver driving a vehicle and i'm in the passenger seat and i don't even know where i'm going to and you're just asking me to trust you well if you let me know that we're passing this route that is okay and safe then I can relax and trust you. So instead of doing that whole blame game, oh, you're just trying to be anti-government, no, just let's, let's just find ways to coexist peacefully and do what's right for the nation. And having to accuse other parties to say that they're you know, inciting things like this or um, likening it to the hashtag NSARS protest that happened in 2020, I, ju I just think that's out of place. And I think it is important that where we are, we're honest with ourselves, we're transparent, one, and then accountable for the actions that we take. And especially as a leader, that's what we expect you to do. Having to blame the um, Labour Party or the PDP or NNPP or any party at all, just, let's just stop the blame game. Take whatever you have now, which is you know where you are, and move on with it and try to be better for everyone. And I think Nigerians will thank you for that. All right, our final top trending story still talks about politics. And this is from the USA. It says Biden drops out of the U.S. 2024 election race. Joe Biden announced his withdrawal from the 2024 U.S. presidential race, endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris as the Democratic Party's new nominee after facing weeks of pressure following a poor debate, performance and health concerns. Biden's decision has left the Democratic Party scrambling to solidify a candidate ahead of the November election, with Harris emerging as a likely nominee, set to be confirmed at the Democratic National Convention in August. Biden's withdrawal followed his COVID-19 diagnosis, which took him off the campaign trail and exacerbated existing concerns about his mental acuity and ability to handle the presidency, highlighted by several public gaffes. Biden is the first sitting president to exist an election race so late due to health reasons, paralleling Lyndon Johnson's in, well, 1968 withdrawal. Democrats are now relying on Harris to prevent a Trump comeback amidst a turbulent political landscape. Well, my heart goes to Joe Biden. I know he's been um, dealing with COVID lately and then his health hasn't been the best at the moment, but hopefully he's recuperating, is getting better. And I think that's what leadership is all about. Sometimes you just have to chew the humble pie. You have to understand that at the end of the day, a country is bigger than me. A country is bigger than my own ambition. A country is bigger than whatever ideas I think I can have or whoever I think I want to be and say this is my own political ambition, this is something I've always wanted, it is to understand that that country comprises of several citizens and those citizens matter as well. In as much as I have my own ambition, the citizens come first. So I think it is understandable for a leader to say, you know what, I don't think I'm at my best right now. And even if I was being elected, I don't think I would be able to give my best to the country. So it is important that I pull out to ensure that someone in a better capacity can do the work. If I cannot do the work, I'm not going to still put my head in the race and say it has to be my own ambition. No, it is pulling back and saying I'm a leader. And as a leader, I have to make certain sacrifices, even if it means sacrificing my own ambition. And so if I'm not going to do the best work for my country, for this nation, then I'll rather pull back so that someone else can step into um, that and fill that role and ensure that whatever is best for the country is what we have. So 
my heart goes to Joe Biden. I hope that he recovers speedily. I hope that he's healthy. Um, but I love the fact that he has done this, sacrificed his own ambition for his people. And that's what we would expect. And bringing it back to Nigeria, that's what we would also expect from our leaders. If you know that you're not capable of the job, it is okay to leave it and ensure that some, you can even support from the sidelines. You can play an advisory role. You don't have to be the one in power. I know power can be intoxicating. Everybody wants power. You want to be the most powerful person um, when it comes to your, constituents, your constituency or when it comes to your state or your country. It's understandable, but sometimes you just have to understand that it is okay not to have that power and you can have that power in other ways. It could just be you fanning the flames or cheering on the sidelines and as long as you're doing, at the end of the day, it's a, collective, it's a collective work. So as long as we're all working for the goal of our nation, that is what should be paramount. And that is exactly what Joe Biden is doing in the U.S. And I think it's super commendable. And like I said, I hope he recovers speedily. Um, we'll look at the polls. We'll see what happens between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. And we'll always give you the updates when it comes at, well, much later in the